Cryptocurrency ultimately owes its success to the crazy competition between its various coins and tokens. This competition has been the most intense among smart contract cryptocurrencies, and Avalanche has recently been raising the bar for its competitors. Today, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of Avalanche, bring you up to speed on the project's most important updates, analyze the price action of AVAX, and tell you why Avalanche is about to rise. Before we get covered in snow, there's something you need to know. There is no financial advice in this video. This is a purely educational show. Contact a financial advisor if you need help with your portfolio. If this is the first time we meet, my name is Guy. Please take a seat. The Coin Bureau is home to some of the highest quality crypto content you'll ever see. Coins, tokens, news, reviews, and other crypto-related topics that come to me. If this is exactly what you need, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. Why not? It's free. If you've got things to do, I've left timestamps below just for you, but do your best to maximize your view. That's it for my debut. Let's see what Avalanche has been up to. If you're new to Avalanche, here's what you need to know. Avalanche was founded in 2018 by Cornell professor and computer scientist Emin Gun Sira. Avalanche was built by Arva Labs, a for-profit software company based in the United States. Avalanche's development is coordinated by the Avalanche Foundation, a nonprofit whose location is not entirely clear. Avalanche raised over $60 million across various token sales in 2019 and 2020 and has raised hundreds of millions of dollars since then. More on that in a moment. The Avalanche mainnet went live in September 2020, and it is technically still in development. Avalanche is a smart contract cryptocurrency like Ethereum, and it currently uses a customized implementation of Ethereum's virtual machine for most of its decentralized applications. What makes Avalanche different from Ethereum is its unique architecture, consensus protocols, and the scalability benefits these bring. Avalanche actually consists of three blockchains, the exchange chain or X chain, the platform chain or P chain, and the contract chain or C chain. The X chain is where Avalanche tokens are issued, including AVAX, Avalanche's native coin. The X chain uses a directed acyclic graph or DAG, which runs the Avalanche consensus protocol and the Avalanche virtual machine. It can process around 4,500 transactions per second. The P chain is where Avalanche validators stake AVAX to secure the Avalanche network. The P chain also makes it possible to create custom blockchains called subnets, which leverage Avalanche validators. The P chain uses a standard blockchain which runs the Snowman consensus protocol and it can process around 1,500 transactions per second. The C chain is where Avalanche smart contracts and dApps are deployed. As you might have guessed, it uses the modified version of the Ethereum virtual machine. The C chain also uses a standard blockchain which runs the Snowman consensus protocol and it can process around 1500 transactions per second. All transaction fees on the Avalanche blockchain are paid for in AVAX. All transaction fees are also burned, and close to 700,000 AVAX have been burned so far. This means Avalanche validators only earn staking rewards, which are currently around 10% per year for both validators and delegators. The minimum stake for validators is 2,000 AVAX, whereas the minimum stake for delegators is 25 AVAX. Staked AVAX are locked for two weeks for both groups, and there is no slashing penalty for misbehaving validators. AVAX has a maximum supply of 720 million, half of which were set aside for staking rewards that are estimated to vest over the next few decades. Of the remaining 50%, about 30% went to Avalanche and its affiliates, and 20% was sold across three ICOs. Avalanche's speed, low fees, and EVM compatibility has made it a popular alternative to Ethereum, and it has attracted nearly 2 million users and counting. Avalanche has over 500 dApps, and its DeFi protocols currently hold over $10 billion in total value locked, the largest of which is Aave, Ethereum's most popular borrowing and lending protocol. Now, if you want to learn more about Aave, you can check out my recent update about the project using the link in the description. 
Anyways, it's been a few months since I last covered Avalanche and a lot has happened since then. Shortly after that video went out, Avalanche announced that it had raised $230 million from more than half a dozen crypto VCs. Avalanche also completed phase four of its ongoing apricot upgrade, which reduced transaction fees, in addition to other things that are too technical to get into here. At the end of September, AVAX listed on the Coinbase exchange. Now, this is a big deal because Avalanche is based in the United States, and up until that point, AVAX wasn't available to US investors. In early October, Aave finally launched on the Avalanche blockchain, something which had initially been announced back in August when Avalanche began its $180 million DeFi incentive program dubbed Avalanche Rush. Avalanche also announced its second drop of Major League Baseball NFTs on Tops NFTs, an NFT marketplace that looks eerily similar to NBA Top Shots, the popular basketball themed NFT marketplace on the Flow blockchain. At the end of October, algorithmic stablecoin Ampleforth integrated with Avalanche, complementing the growing ecosystem of experimental economic projects building on Avalanche, such as Wonderland, a fork of Olympus, that I won't even try to explain here. In early November, Avalanche announced a $200 million developer fund with support from the Avalanche Foundation and a few crypto VCs. If you watched my recent video about Electric Capital's crypto developer report, you'll know Avalanche has accrued a lot of full-time developers, and it's possible this fund played a role in that outcome. A few days later, Avalanche revealed the Snowtrace blockchain explorer built by the team behind Etherscan, making it easier to analyze Avalanche's sea chain, at least for me. One week after that, Avalanche announced that Tether's USDT stablecoin had launched on the Avalanche blockchain. There is now nearly 1 billion USDT on Avalanche, and it appears to be the most held token on the C chain besides AVAX. In mid November, Big Four accounting firm Deloitte announced a partnership with Arva Labs to launch a disaster recovery platform on the Avalanche blockchain. Bit ironic given the name, but perhaps it was intentional. At the end of November, Avalanche announced phase five of its ongoing apricot upgrade. The biggest benefit it brought was the facilitation of asset transfers between Avalanche's three blockchains. An Avalanche ecosystem accelerator called Colony also announced an $18 million raise from various crypto VCs to bootstrap early Avalanche projects and even provide liquidity to select DeFi protocols on Avalanche. Speaking of which, if you're wondering how and where you can find Avalanche gems early, you can check out my Avalanche tutorial using the link in the top right. Anyhow, in early December, crypto custodian Fireblocks added support for AVAX, making it possible for over 650 institutions to invest in the asset. Arva Labs was also selected by Mastercard to participate in its crypto startup program, foreshadowing a potential partnership between the two companies. The next day, AVAX listed on FTX, another grade A cryptocurrency exchange, which I highly recommend. You can find my tutorial for that in the description as well as a trading fee discount. In mid-December, Circle's USDC stablecoin launched on the Avalanche blockchain and has likewise seen significant adoption with over 1.5 billion USDC issued. Crypto custodian BitGo also added support for AVAX, further increasing the asset's access to institutions. If that wasn't bullish enough, the Bank of America called Avalanche a serious Ethereum competitor due to its speed and subnet capabilities. Earlier this month, Arva Labs partnered with a Turkish electric vehicle manufacturer to introduce smart contract functionality to its automobiles. Avalanche's first initial litigation offering also successfully reached its target of $300,000. Now, for those unfamiliar, initial litigation offerings, or ILOs, basically make it possible to crowdfund the money required to sue someone, something which is apparently quite popular in the United States. The first Avalanche ILO was announced back in December 2020, and it involves a Californian hemp grower named Apotheo, whose hemp farm was unlawfully destroyed by police in October 2019. Apotheo plans to sue the Californian government for $1 billion, and this is obviously going to cost a pretty penny. That's why Apotheo opted to go the ILO route, and so far it's raised over $330,000 with 78 days still to go. 
Those who participated in the Apotheo ILO will get a cut of the damages awarded, with a return on investing ranging from 30% to 5x. ILO participants will be issued tokens on the Avalanche blockchain, which can be redeemed for these rewards, assuming the suit is successful, of course. In the interim, it sounds like these ILO tokens will be tradable, and this means there will likely be a secondary market on Avalanche DEXs where people will speculate on their actual ROI. If you want to learn more about ILOs, I'll leave a few resources for you in the description. Now, just a few days ago, there were two more juicy announcements for Avalanche. The first was Celsius's announcement that it had added support for AVAX. This is significant because Celsius is one of the most popular crypto apps with nearly 2 million users. The second was FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried's support of Avalanche in a recent podcast, where he said that it was one of his favorite cryptocurrencies outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Sam's favorite cryptocurrency is Solana, and if you want to learn more about that, you can do so using the link in the top right. Anywho, the effects of Avalanche's announcements, upgrades, and updates can be clearly seen in AVAX's price action. It rallied by more than 3x within three months. What's more is that AVAX is still up more than 2x since I last covered the project and remains in a clear uptrend despite the massive crypto market dip we've seen over the last few months. This is for one simple reason, and that's demand. According to DAP Radar, Avalanche's C chain has around half a million monthly active users, which is not too shabby at all. The number of daily transactions on the C chain has also been on a relentless rise. Besides the C chain's EVM support, Avalanche's amazing adoption is likely because Binance and Coinbase support withdrawals and deposits directly from and to the C chain. This makes Avalanche very accessible to the average crypto holder. And this gives it a huge advantage over EVM-compatible smart contract cryptocurrencies, which lack this support and require constant bridging. On the supply side, the AVAX in circulation has increased by more than 10% since September, specifically 24 million AVAX. This is due to AVAX's aggressive vesting schedule, which saw two huge unlocks at the end of September and the end of December. Assuming an average price of $70 per AVAX during that time, this works out to a staggering $1.7 billion of sell pressure at a profit of up to 200x for any early investors. Although it's very unlikely that all this AVAX was actually sold, it looks like it was enough to negatively impact its price. Notice how there were visible declines at the end of September and the end of December. The good news is that the next vesting cliff will come at the end of March, which is two months away. In the meantime, the demand for AVAX will probably continue to rise. In terms of how high AVAX could rise, this is somewhat limited by its massive market cap, which currently sits at over $20 billion. Even so, I would say it's possible, if not likely, that Avalanche could crack the top five, especially since some of the cryptocurrencies in its way are of a lesser caliber to put it mildly. Another factor that will influence AVAX's price is Avalanche's own upcoming milestones. While Avalanche has yet to release an updated roadmap for 2022, a few milestones on its 2021 roadmap have yet to be met, and a few more milestones were revealed in interviews with Avalanche founder Emin Gunsira. Starting with the 2021 roadmap, there are three unmet milestones I want to point out. The first is pruning. Now, without getting too technical, pruning makes it possible to reduce the size of the Avalanche blockchain. This is important because if the Avalanche blockchain gets too large, it will be difficult for more than a few validator nodes to store its full transaction history, and that will compromise its decentralization and hence its security. Avalanche talked about pruning at length in a December 2020 Medium post, which noted that it would be a part of the ongoing Apricot upgrade. As far as I can tell, Pruning has yet to be implemented. This is because pruning was only mentioned in the Medium post about the first phase of Apricot, which noted pruning would be introduced in future Apricot upgrades, yet none of the Medium posts about them have mentioned pruning since then. The second unmet milestone from the 2021 roadmap is additional Avalanche wallets, something that is much needed given that AVAX doesn't have much wallet support. 
The current Avalanche wallet is a web wallet, which isn't the most secure since it's connected to the internet and requires you to be on a computer to move AVAX around. The Avalanche wallet also can't interact with decentralized applications on Avalanche's C chain. The Avalanche C chain is compatible with MetaMask, but it sounds like there are still some compatibility issues that are being worked out on that end. These are just a few of the reasons why Avalanche will be releasing a mobile wallet app as well as a browser extension wallet, though an update date has not been provided for either. The third unmet milestone from the 2021 roadmap is the introduction of new Avalanche bridges that will support other EVM-compatible smart contract cryptocurrencies beyond Ethereum, along with other non-Ethereum blockchains. No due date for that one either, I'm afraid. As for milestones mentioned by Emin himself, the first is Avalanche's integration with Cosmos's Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol, or IBC. Without getting too off-topic, an Avalanche integration with IBC would make it seamlessly interoperable with other cryptocurrencies that have integrated IBC, which is most of Cosmos's ecosystem, as well as a few other proof-of-stake cryptocurrencies such as Polkadot. Emin addressed Avalanche's IBC integration in an October interview, though he specified this is something that's further down on Avalanche's to-do list. Something that seems to be further up on the list is an on-chain governance structure for Avalanche, which Emin mentioned in one of his weekly videos on the Avalanche YouTube channel in November. Unfortunately, he didn't provide any details about this, and the few posts about governance on the Avalanche forum have gone mostly unanswered. This brings me to the concerns I have about Avalanche. Most of my concerns fall into one category, and that's transparency. For starters, there really doesn't seem to be much information about the Avalanche Foundation. This probably wouldn't matter were it not for the fact that the Avalanche Foundation holds almost 10% of AVAX's total supply, which makes it the largest initial recipient of AVAX besides the team. This ties into the surprising lack of transparency around AVAX's tokenomics. The AVAX info page on the Avalanche website doesn't mention anything about initial distribution or vesting, nor does it note which wallet addresses belong to the foundation and team. Not only that, but the Avalanche support page provides next to no details in response to the question of vesting for early investors. Once upon a time, Avalanche had an entire website which went into extreme detail about AVAX's initial distribution, but it looks like this website was recently removed. My other concerns with Avalanche relate to competition. Avalanche isn't the only smart contract cryptocurrency around using the EVM, and this means that it's constantly fighting with other EVM projects for developers. Emin has admitted on many occasions that it's been difficult to find devs, and though this seems to have improved over the last year or so, it didn't improve enough to deliver on all of Avalanche's 2021 promises, and it could affect Avalanche's ability to deliver on any promises it makes this year. Meanwhile, many of Avalanche's competitors have been hyper-focused on attracting developers and building decentralized applications, and have been super successful on both fronts. Now, this might be because Avalanche doesn't really have a clear mission statement. Avalanche was initially focused on asset tokenization, and you could argue that it still is, but I would argue that actions speak louder than words. I've been following Avalanche for a while now, and my impression is that it has been reactive rather than proactive. In other words, it's been following the trends rather than setting them. Right now, Avalanche seems to be focused on DeFi, and that's all well and good, but that's a very crowded neighborhood, and it's recently been facing fierce competition from Phantom. That said, the trends are in Avalanche's favor, and if it continues the way it has, Avalanche could become big enough to challenge Ethereum. Ethereum 2.0 could change that outlook, though, and you can learn more about that using the link in the top right. That's it for today's Avalanche update, people. If you had fun, let me know by smashing that like button and consider subscribing to the channel and pinging that notification bell before you run. If you're looking for more, here's what I have in store. My second channel called Coin Bureau Clips where I post emergency market updates. My Twitter, TikTok and Instagram where I share memes and hot takes. My Telegram where I post news and insights you need to know. My weekly newsletter where you can see my personal crypto portfolio. 
And last but not least, the Coin Bureau merch store, which is packed with crypto-themed hoodies, sweaters, and tees. Links to all of these and more are waiting for you in the description down below. Thank you as always for your time. The pleasure was all mine. Remember, keep calm and hodl on. This is Guy bidding you goodbye. 